Hello, and welcome to Nice Out, isn't it? Except we're not out, we're down pit. And if I sound a bit frightened, they left me here last week, turned the lights out, and I'm still... Ah, there you are, lads. Thank you so much for rescuing me. I'll tell you what, Nice Out, isn't it? Becomes Nice Out down this week, and we're going to continue our look around Cap House Colliery at the National Coal Mining Museum. Come on, let's make a start. Now, as you know, I had a bit of trouble with lighting at the start of the programme. Well, it's cured for me, but as far as your early miner was concerned, it wasn't as easy as that. We've already said that candles were in evidence, but even when candles became a thing of the past, it wasn't overly bright, was it, Andy? It certainly wasn't. We went on to a famous inventor, Sir Humphrey Davy, made this flame safety lamp. It was doubly useful, once for, for lighting, but it also detected dangerous gases underground. Right. Don't tell me it used to go boom or something like that. If, if it finds enough methane, it'll go. It'll yep. explode inside the glass, but it's perfectly safe. It, yep, it, it is. It's totally enclosed. That's why they called it a safety yeah, lamp. Exactly. Because although it would give you light, it wouldn't give you too much trouble. That's right. Fancy going around with one of that, as that's the only thing you've got to go to the coal face and start hacking away, eh? You want to see the cool face? Right, we'll take you there now. Follow us. Peter, this fellow's uh, what you call a ripper. Now, I've not uh, been familiar with that term before. What, what's his job? Uh, it looks very dangerous. Well, we're looking at one end of an advancing coal face. The stone that we're looking at now, above the coal, is called the ripping. And the man who deals with the ripping is called the ripper. Right. Okay. I won't. I won't go for his uh, his, his his nickname. But I mean, it, it, that could fall down on him as he's doing it, couldn't it? Well, what he wants to do is get it to come down in a controlled manner. Ah. He drills holes in the ripping. Yeah. Sets explosives and blasts it down. Th wow. This enables him to set more supports at this at this uh, tunnel to advance the tunnel, following the advancement. Of the coal face. Because otherwise you'd just be on your hands and knees for mile after mile, wouldn't That's you? That's right. We need to keep these tunnels moving forward at either end of this advancing face. Yeah. This is what you might have seen in 1950s. Yeah. So as late as that, as late as 60 odd years ago, it was still being done like this. Yeah. In fact, even when we got properly mechanised, we still had uh, drilling and firing rippings into the 70s and beyond. There you go. You learn something every day, don't you? Come down and have a look for yourself. about you but I'm getting a bit peckish by now we've been going round for a bit haven't we do you want to stop for a bit of snap as it used to be called I'm sure some of you older people will remember that well that's what this old fella's doing here isn't it yeah Dougie uh, sat yeah. down ready for a snap yeah. absolutely sorry what's his name Andy? Dougie Dougie so Dougie. this is Dougie is it yeah. and how would he go about getting something to eat because there's no cafe down here yeah. is there first there's no tea making facilities well first of all you only get what you bring with you and that's sort um, of it, uh, isn't it? Yes, and it, it brings a snap in this tin, snap tin. Why is it in a metal tin? Because mice couldn't get into it. Ah, of course you'll have mice around, oh, will you? Mice. Yeah. So that's what you there have you to have get So your food goes in that? Yep. It's not that big, is no, it? No, not for a 12-hour shift. No. And your water came down in this. In this. Called the Dudley. Well, it's almost like it's it's almost like the things you see in old cowboy, cowboy westerns, exactly, isn't it? You yeah. know, when they're all in the desert exactly, and yeah. they take a swig out of that. It's a bit primitive, isn't it? I'm afraid. Well, that was but standard. That was standard, yeah, that and was there's standard. not much. I mean, there can't be much more than what say half a liter yeah, in that at that, most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that brings me to another point. If it goes in one end. It's it's to come out other, isn't it? Where, is there, where, where are the conveniences here? Uh, everywhere. There's just none, is there? Yep. There's just no. You've just got to go where it's quiet and where uh, with where a you shovel. Can, with a shovel, because you've got to move it afterwards, mm. haven't yes. you? Oh, to be a miner, eh? Yeah. I'll tell you what. How did they keep the roof up? Let's find out now, shall we? Come on with us. Right, this is the business end, isn't it? This is showing us how, in the latter part of uh, coal winning, it was done. Can you describe what's what's happening, Stephen? 
We've got a machine here called a trepanner. It's typically what we might have seen in 1960s. It's moving forward, cutting and loading the coal and throwing it onto a metal conveyor. The roof is held up by three rows of manually operated hydraulic, pro hydraulic props. As it moves forward, we push the conveyor forward and the back row of props are withdrawn and reset to form a new front row. And it gradually works forward. And, and does that mean that the roof gradually settles behind you? As you withdraw or draw off the back row of props, it leaves the now unsupported ground at the back free to fall. So it, it collapses, hopefully, in a controlled manner. Yeah, yeah. These are all moved forward by hand. So whilst they're a lot stronger than wooden props, it's quite a task moving them forward Yeah, because you you've got to let them down and then jack them up yeah. again. And, 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 and of course, it t if, if people, if you know exactly what a car jack can be like, it can take a fair few strokes uh, to get it moving, can't it? Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We've got proper full mechanisation. It's quite a complicated machine called yep. a trepanner. And this is cutting coal out of the face. That's right. Great. Lovely. Let's move on a bit further from here then. Keep up with us. Come on. We're moving towards the end of the tour now, but Andy, we're coming more up to date as we go along. So how far have we got? Is this the 80s, the did you say? The 70s. The 70s, right. Yes, this is the 70s. So yeah. what have we got here? What we've am got, I looking we've at? Got, uh, what they call a shearer, and it cuts and loads at the same time. That piece of equipment there, uh, called a the cow, pushes it all onto this chain conveyor, and it's sent out at mine. And that's where it's actually digging that, into the seam, That's exactly where it? it's cut, and you can see yep. all, all marks on the seam where it yep. cuts. Uh, behind us now, we don't have manually operated props. We have remotely operated chocks. So we have six hydraulic prop legs, all in a all in a formation, and the lower up and down controlling sea movement, roof movement, and we just keep advancing them. As you're moving along. As you're moving along. Excellent. So, it, so it's much easier now than it was where we've just been because it's not there's no manual work involved. It's just actually moving an handle to get things working. And in fact, that's what it's all about, to make the job a yeah. hard job a bit easier. Mechanisation, yeah. Now here we have a machine called the Dosco Dint Header, very popular in the 70s and 80s. It has a rotating mat of picks that goes up and down and cuts a square or rectangular shape roadway. It cuts the middle, then draws back, cuts the left, draws back, cuts the right. Then it can set a girder. This c can move very quickly in the right uh, conditions. Coal seams and soft stones are most suited. You could get up to 100 metres of, of week of tunnelling by using this machine on a three shift system 24 hours a day. And this, folks, is what it's all about. This was dug out of here when this bit closed in 1985. It's been here ever since, and it's coming to the top with us now. Now then, something a little bit different. You're all old enough to remember a BBC series called Last of the Summer Wine. There's a character on that called Compo. And we've got Compo Mark II here. I don't know. Look at him. Look at him. Can you see why they call his nicknames Compo? My goodness. Compo, and I'm going to call you that rather than your other name. No, no, no. You've got this most wonderful locomotive here that used to work underground, didn't, yes, didn't it? Did. it? You're restoring it. It yeah. needs to run again, doesn't it? Tell this, me a bit yeah. about it and what you're doing to get it started again. Well, it'll run for about six years, so we're just checking everything out and yeah. going, just giving it an overall to yeah. see what it needs. You were telling me it's a Hudswell Clark it's with a gardener. It's Hudswell Clark's, made in on slit and leads. It's a 100 horsepower, uh, six-cylinder gardener engine. Yeah. It weighs 15 tonne. It's a six-wheeler. Middle wheels haven't got a plan. Flangeless. Ah, that's the go-round chart bends, isn't it? it? Yeah. 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 OK. So, literally, I know it's looking a bit rusty, but when they were made like this, they were made to last. Now, but you don't have too much, do you, to do When they were made, 
yeah. there were before NCB went into making them all go white. Yeah. They, they were in racing green. Oh, very and they nice. They were painted in coach paint with camel hair brushes. Do you think you might just do that to it? I don't think museum will stand it. <laughs> you bet they'll stand you working on it and getting it yeah, going. Yeah, getting it to it. wouldn't be an original if you, if you put no, this in that's, racing that, green. No, that's true. Again. So it's your intention to get it working on this railway here? Yes, it's been running. We've run it up this morning. Oh, that, oh crikey, that's good, isn't it? It's, it's kind of nice to have a, 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 you know, a pit head with a running railway, isn't well, it? Well, it is. That's what it was designed for, wasn't but, it? Yeah, but I mean, I can see over the top of it. It's a bit low, isn't it? But there's yeah, but a reason it, for it. <laughs> well, first of all, your roadways aren't that higher. And secondly, when you're on man riding, you can't have a look either in your man riding car. That's true. That's true, isn't it? If you're lucky, you'll get through. Your cars will get through. <laughs> and, of course, they're very small of the coaches, aren't they? Well, we've got some up there. I don't yeah. know if you've seen yeah. Oh, we'll be having a look at them yeah. in a minute well, I mean, while I'm talking to you. They're the bit higher than Loki because yeah. we've got plenty of clearance Of course you have. You've, you've no height restrictions no, on this line. No. no. What what brought you to it then, Compo? What, what made well, you decide what? to come, I'm going to do this? Well, my dad was engineered down at Pitt. Yeah. At Pitt, at my first bit. And I've always been interested in steam locos right. and um, diesels. And yeah. we had diesels down at Pitt, steamers on yeah. surface. But my dad couldn't see favouritism <laughs> because I was his son. Of course. So he had to put me through it, but I had a secret weapon. <laughs> my mum. Right. That got me down. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I've noticed in the in the waiting yard there, you've got a, you've got an old steamer waiting. Uh, Are you going to start on that sometime? And that's up to the curatorial. <laughs> It'll cost a fortune for boiler. I, I can imagine, but, but at least you can get these running. And these are this is running. This has been running. Yeah. Oh, of course, you said it had been running this morning. This morning yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, more power to your elbow, mate. Thank and you. May you continue doing this until long after retirement. Because well, you're, 70, not, you're 70, not... 71 now, but... I wouldn't have said you were old uh, enough to retire, mate. No, I don't feel it. <laughs> All the best. Yeah. And we're going from here to look at Hope Pit. Look at that, isn't it a beauty? And it's a lot, actually, it looks smaller than Cap House. It isn't Cap House, no, this is Hope Pit. Because, Andy, we're in a separate pit. It's still on the same site, it's still on the museum site, but this was a separate pit, this wasn't was it? This was a separate pit when it started. It's yep. called Oak Colliery. Uh, it, it isn't as, as deep as Cap House. No. Uh, and that's why Edgar's not quite as high. Right. Uh, looking at it, I would say... Wouldn't it be normal if this connected up with Cap House, it, did it? It did connect up with Cap House. They actually joined together at a later date. Yeah. And they used to ride men and materials here and concentrate on, on just winding coal at Cap House. Right, I see, and take people, the, up, the men, the pit men up and down here. Yes. Because that would, be, that would be better because it would make ventilation work at a time when ventilation wasn't a priority for owners, uh, that's, would it? That's the, the, vent, the reason why they're so close together is because ventilation, yeah. they, they didn't have ventilating fans and things like that they relied yep. on natural ventilation so they could only yep. go so far apart indeed and that's, and that's why the reason they're really really close together so it sort of prompts the question if they joint together you don't take people down one end and up the other why is that uh, well <laughs> i know why but <laughs> it's get, something we've not mentioned so yeah. far and that is mine flooding which was ever present isn't yeah. it that's right uh, we're, we're actually pumping uh, we've got a submersible pump at the bottom of this shaft which pumps 1500 gallons per minute mm. for between 12 and 24 hours per day yeah because obviously water will find its own level that's and correct. its own level is the lowest it can get yeah. into how much of a problem was that and ventilations in mind uh, in the old days, there were very reaching problems. There's still an inherent danger with both ventilation and, and, and water in mines, even now. Mm -hmm. But the more control because we've got techno we've got more technology, we've got bigger pumps, we've got bigger fans. Basically, we've made the world bigger yep. underground. I feel a bit odd here because this is a pit head and I'm in a library and pits and libraries don't sit easy with me. There's got to be a good reason for it and we can find out because we've got Anisha Christensen here with us. Uh, you look after this, but I do. A, a pit with a library, books and, and, and miners don't sit well with me. Well, um, uh, there's 
lots of uh, miners who have had lots of training books and the managers and deputies will have had books in their offices and um but also uh, we're a museum Ah, and that's the reason yes. there's a library, a research library here. Um, and um, we're actually sitting in the study at the moment. So this is just a small sample of the books that we have. So this isn't just This isn't it. the library, no. <laughs> um, we have a, a store which is temperature controlled mm -hmm. to keep um, thousands and thousands of books and journals that we have on coal mining. Now, that to me says they're all sort of history books. Is that correct? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, we have a lot of history, as, yeah. you've, as yeah. you've mentioned, um, a lot of regional history uh, and regional coalfields because we cover all of England. Yes, indeed. It's not uh, just as here at South Yorkshire that it you isn't. do it. No, no, carry on. Uh, <laughs> own, but we also cover a lot of the subjects to do with coal mining from geology, mm -hmm. science, technology, um, all the technical aspects of coal mining. Uh, we've also got things like transactions of institutes of miners and Oh, you deal with the money. And, 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 all and, and, all, of... and all the, the, the things to do with setting up a mine and the problems of strata and things like that. Yes, and, and also we've got information on kind of innovation in mining um, legislation as well. What you can do legally and what you can't, can't do. Can't do, yeah. uh, you know, important things like the 1842 Employment Commission. Um, and we've also got things, a lot of things, obviously, as you'd imagine from the National Coal Board but also um, things from the NUM, um, minutes and proceedings, that sort of thing as well. So it, the whole gamut of anything that went yes. on with the mining industry, yes. you will probably have a book to help somebody. Now, that's it, you see. It is a library, but is it a lending library? I mean, for instance, do you come and check out a book like you would at your local library no. at home? No. Unfortunately, it's a reference library only because a lot of the items that we have are rare. Do you sometimes rely on volunteers? We do, yeah. Would you have thought that a library could be so interesting? If you're interested in that and you might think of volunteering here, look to the end of the programme and on the credits at the end we'll tell you how you can get in touch here and actually come and do some volunteer work here. In the meantime, get your coat, we're moving on. Well, this is the final visit to somewhere at the National Coal Mining Museum, and this is Andy Smith who's going to tell us about it, who you've met now and again as we've been walking. But Andy, what I haven't asked you before, what's your job here? My job is safety engineer. Right, I bet that covers a heck of a lot it when does. you've got the public here. Yeah. What do you have to do? Just give us an idea well, of things you have to bear in mind. Basically, I've got to run the mine to the Mines and Quarries Act. I see, yes. And the rest of the site's got to run to Health and Safety at Work Act. Right, and in the meantime, he's got the public. Just just to make life simpler. It'll be a lot easier without public, yes. <laughs> I tell you what, as we've been just walking down here, I've seen loads and loads of little metal boxes. Uh, we're at the baths. This is part of it, isn't it? Yes. These are what they call lockers, miners' lockers. Mm -hmm. And we're stood now in dirty lockers where they used to keep the pit clothes. The pit clothes, yeah. The other side yeah. is the, where they used to keep the clean clothes. And in between is the showers where they used to get clean I'm after sure, they worked underground. I'm sure we're going to see all about... Hang on, hang on. What's this here? Bath's office, no money, then no soap. Do not even ask. Yes. Why the heck had you to buy everything? You know, did, did you charge him for water? <laughs> they would have done if they could. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bit of a... A bit of a palace in here, yeah. And if you didn't bring any soap, you're better asking your mates to borrow theirs rather than ask. ask, ask it, yeah, I can imagine. And yeah. there would have be a bit of a camaraderie oh, right? well, if somebody had forgotten uh, the, the few pence for, exactly. for a bit of soap. Somebody, because I mean, can you imagine having to do well, it without soap? And a, lot, cold or a lot of people didn't, didn't use that soap because it was it titled PHB pitted bath soap. Oh, it, right. It wasn't very. You didn't get many soaps. Not, out not of it. what you could call perfumed luxury <laughs> soft soap. So. Exactly. <laughs> so what 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 did the bath officer do as uh, as well as that? Obviously, well, selling soap wasn't the, the only job. It the did. bath attendant had the job of keeping the bath clean. Uh, not, a, I, not a not not the best of jobs, I should imagine. Uh, but quite, not as quite, bad as being at pit face. Oh yeah, quite difficult. But uh, if you ever walked into clean side in your mucky clothes. You get shouted at and uh, said, no, uh, 
don't do that. Or words to that effect. Words to that effect, yeah. <laughs> and they had the job of making yeah. sure water temperatures were correct, were correct and, and, yeah. and we didn't have diseases, cleaning floors. Yes, we could, they dealt with a few medical things, yes, didn't they? They, did, yeah. they had the sticking plasters and bandages. Well, uh, for minor them. injuries, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you are, that's the baths office. So what we'll do now is we will move on and you follow us to the business end of this. Bayek, I'll tell you something, Andy. This looks a bit primitive. Oh, no, this was luxury, this. Really? Before this, it was told bathtub sat up floor <laughs> in front of fire. That was at home, wasn't that it? That was at home, yeah. And that meant the wife had to sort that e out. Exactly, everything. yeah. And no doubt everybody had to get in before father because father was dirty. Exactly, exactly wow, yeah. Wow, it, yes, it, it's stuff of legend, is this? Yeah. But did this cave come in with any mining after something? Was it was it compulsory? Because I bet, I bet the original pit owners wouldn't have done this if they didn't did, have did, to. All, my, all bass uh, associated with mining have all been paid for by miners. They all, they all they put, paid for it themselves, like yeah, the soap, they yes, paid for it themselves. So, and this was built in 1938, as right. late as 1938. Right, it smells like it was built in 1938 <laughs> as well. <laughs> it's, it's had loads, I mean, I bet there's as much coal dust being down here as oh, there is on the back of some trucks. I bet there has, yeah. <laughs> so, they, did a whole shift come in together, was it? Yes, yeah. basically, yeah. And that's why they didn't have single compartments. Because no, everybody used to wash yeah. each other's backs. And, yeah, uh, well, exactly. There's, there's ways of doing it. And I mean, right, yeah. I haven't discovered a way to wash my own back without no, a back brush exactly. yet. So it was all communal and all the lads worked together to get themselves exactly, clean. Yeah. It must have taken a while, didn't oh, it? Oh, did, yeah. Did, did, did they have... I don't suppose they had to clock in and clock out of here, did they? Did well, no, no. Oh, this, 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 this would be... You're actually showering your own time. So Of course, you're not paid for so being not in here, are you? not paid for being in here. Oh, crafty. Yeah. So, yes, indeed, because I'd heard stories about miners being dot pay for carrying injured or dead comrades out at well, one time. Or is that just here, sir? That's, that, that's open to question, is it? Well, if you got injured and people carried you out, the people that carried you out got paid, but yeah. the injured person didn't. Right. So as soon as you got injured and you stopped working, you you dot pay. But anybody who had to carry out were, were paid to, to the time. It was a flaming hard life being a pit oh, man, wasn't it? it? It certainly was, especially early years. How do you feel yourself? Are you glad it's over or are you sorry it's gone? Uh, a bit of both, really. A bit of both, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I wouldn't change anything. I think, I think I've, I've been dead lucky. Yeah. And I've worked in, in mine since 70, 1971. And I probably wouldn't change it. Uh, change anything but a lot of people's had a harder times than me you know yeah. so, so you've got yeah. to appreciate that as well just finally then how do people react when they come around here not just to the bus but to the whole site at cap house Collier? i think it's an eye opener for 90 percent of the people that's that's ever been really and even for ex-miners yeah and of course this is built up for the public not for how it used to be for the pit men that's right no right well there you are i hope you've enjoyed your two visits to uh cap house colliery uh but I've been down the pit, I've gone all over, I'm feeling a bit mucky. I'm going to have a shower now, so I'm taking my clothes off. You don't want to see that. Now you just scram right now, all right? And I'll see you next week, all right? Oh, forgot me towel.